This is Making Comics 101, Issue 1, getting started. <music> Greetings, people of the internet. I'm Scott with Surfworks Art Labs. Welcome, mad creators, to the Underground Laboratory, where together we are going to be creating some awesome comics because this is Making Comics 101. And today, uh, this is like the first issue or episode, whatever you we're calling it issues, because this is a, hey, this is comics, all right? So today, we're going to talk about just getting started. But before we get into that, what I want to talk about first is what this thing is all about, what this series is all about, okay? So uh, it was, uh, I think it was Jim Shooter, a uh, former editor of Marvel Comics, that once said, every comic is somebody's first comic. So I want this uh, series to sort of be like this, where you can, you can watch it from the beginning if you want. It's, you know, there's probably some benefit to doing this but you could also jump in at any time we are going to break this thing down into different areas where you know one week we might talk about penciling one week we might talk about inking and we'll kind of go in the order of how a comic typically should be made and there are some differences there sometimes they don't always have to be done in a particular order and not always by the same people sometimes one person's working on something while another person's working on something else if you're collaborating or whatever so we're going to have different issues and they're all going to feature a different part, a different element, a different discipline pertaining to making comics. So, you know, no matter if this, if you're watching right now or if you've seen some of the other episodes, you're working your way back, that's what this is all about. You can jump in at any time and then if you feel like maybe I'm pretty good at penciling but I need some help inking, we'll just watch the inking stuff. Or maybe I need to brush up on my penciling or my storytelling or, you know, my idea generating. All of this stuff is going to be covered because this series, it's going to be basically the nuts and bolts of creating comics from start to finish. Everything from coming up with the ideas all the way to getting this thing out, printed, promoting it and everything and everything in between. That's what this series is going to be about. So that's what we're talking about, getting started. How do you get started creating your comic? Because it's such a, it really, it's kind of this monumental task when you look at it because there's so many different elements. This series is going to go on for a while because there are so many different intricate parts of creating a comic that it can be a little overwhelming. Sometimes it's just, you look at this thing and you're like, how do I get started? Where, I, I just don't know where to begin. Again. Well, that's what we're going to talk about. We're going to put you in the right mind space to, you know, get you started, get you creating your, your comic, and, uh, and then take it from there. And you can follow this series all the way to the end if you want. It's up to you guys. So getting started, what is all that, what is that all about? Well, the first thing I want to talk about, the first thing we, we, we kind of break this down into some sections. So the first thing is prepare. Preparation is key. We want to prepare ourselves for success. The main thing is what is your goal? What are you trying to get out of this? Obviously you want to have a cool comic, but are, are we doing this for fun? Do we want to try to get this out and profit out of it? Or, you know, is it for a client? What's the end goal? I mean, you have to have a goal in mind if you're going to succeed because I've seen so many people that start making comics and then unfortunately they, they just give up or they burn out or whatever and we don't want you to do that so we're gonna kind of be with you on this journey all of the way so yeah definitely prepare for success know what your goal is uh, and and then you got to stick to that we'll have some other tips and things to, to kind of help you along the way and sticking to that goal and make sure that you that you meet your goal so in preparation the other thing you want to think about are what are the tools you're going to be using uh, there's so many different ways to create comics if you want just to create your comic book fully analog you know the traditional way you can do that if you want if you want to do it digitally all in the computer or you can do sort of this hybrid method which is sort of what I do I'm I'm kind of moving more towards the digital thing but I still love the traditional stuff so there's certain things and there's people I know that that are whiz at digital artwork and everything but they just love the feel or the look and everything of creating stuff traditional and that's all on there's not there's not a right or wrong way to make comics but you do kind of have to know in the onset kind of how you're going to go about this. And and maybe maybe you don't know that yet. Maybe you are just to a total novice and that's cool too because we're going to help you through this. But if you can, try to get an idea of what kind of tools you're going to use, what that process is going to be, you know, maybe break it down into steps. And again, each one of these issues of this series is going to take on another one of those steps. Okay, the next thing we're going to talk about is productivity. How do you be productive? Uh, this, this, if there is one 
bit of advice that I find that I'm always giving. If I could only give one piece of advice to people, it is keep it simple. You know, especially if you're just starting out. Do not, do not, please. Do not start off with your magnum opus, this crazy world building. We will get into some world building, but you gotta be careful with that, especially if it's your first time, because you're just never gonna get anything done if you've gotta you know, come up with all the different characters. And this is part of creating comics. You know, if you're a seasoned veteran, it's a little different story. I mean, you can go into you know, where these people are from, their background, what the world's like, you know, all this different stuff. It's fun to do, but if you get bogged down in that stuff, you are never gonna get your comic out. And that also goes for the size of your comic. I mean, don't, you know, I would recommend when you're first starting off, start off with like a four or eight pager. I, I know everyone wants to do this massive book. We all wanna do the graphic novel and everything, but just starting off, just even if you section off your, if you're going, if you wanna create a graphic novel, just section it off and say, Hey, all right, the goal is I want to create this first chapter. It's going to be four pages. I mean, maybe not a chapter, but the first section, uh, four pages, maybe eight pages. But I would stick it, I would really, you know, keep it less than that because. What it, and I did this with my book. So I've got a I've got a book called Young and the Dead. It's like Goonies meets Night of the Living Dead. It's kids versus zombies. And you know these so these are like the issues here. Now I broke these down into issues. Now originally, yeah, I wanted to create a graphic novel and eventually this will be a full story. But I knew that I would never get this done if the end goal was so far away that you know the end of this graphic novel. I mean, I just couldn't do it. I I know people that can, and if you were super disciplined, maybe, especially if you are somebody who's been doing this for a while, but if you're getting started, start with smaller. I mean, this is, when I first started off on Young and the Dead, it was a mini comic. I started off with a mini comic, and then from there, I like got it done, and I was excited. I'm like, oh man, I'm really digging this. I like this. Now on to the next step. Because you can always continue your stories and you know improve on them and everything. Maybe if you've got this awesome idea that you've always wanted to do, maybe put that aside. Because one of the problems I had you know, starting out is that my first comic that it wasn't my first comic, but one of the first comics I really got serious about was this comic called Retrofits. It was about these teen pop stars that disappeared off of the face of the earth and then they re-emerged in modern times, but they had no idea where they were and to top it all off, they now had superpowers and they have no idea why. So this was sort of the concept of that story. And we'll talk about story building in other episodes and everything like that. But so, so I started off and I wanted this book to be great and what I would do is I would just constantly redo page after page Page. I would I would do the first page and I'd go maybe four pages in and then I I didn't like it and then I scrapped it and then I started again and I would do the same thing with like submissions to like comic book companies and everything like that where I would draw it now that's a little different because you do kind of want something to be great if you're submitting and everything we'll probably get that into that in another episode M me personally right now I'm mostly self-published so that's kind of the route that I take the thing is perfection is sort of is very elusive you're never gonna get perfect and if you're constantly trying to make it perfect you're never gonna have anything done what I would have been better off doing is just pick another property and say okay I'm gonna do this four page story you get that four page story done maybe you're not at the right level the level you want to be at for that first page story but it's done you've got that complete then you get go on to the next story and you'll get better and better and you can gradually make larger stories more detailed stories but for the in the beginning keep it simple don't be too precious that is kind of the key to success. The number one rule I can give you is just keep it short and keep it simple. So the other thing I wanna talk about is community because when we're creating comics, it's hard to create comics in a vacuum. Even most of our, us comic book artists, myself included, we're introverts. We love just sitting down and just getting to work and doing all that stuff without any, sometimes without any inside, outside influence. But you do need that community because one thing that's gonna do is that's gonna help hold you accountable. I love when I'm, if I'm working on a comic, it would just go on a live stream with some of my friends that are working on comics and we'll just talk back and forth almost like a virtual studio, like a virtual like bullpen 
from like Marvel back in the days, but it's all online and everything. Um, because it's it's hard to create comics, and if you have somebody with you along on your journey, they're going to keep you focused on the task and make sure that, that you, you stick to it and everything like that. Um, so there's a number of communities, uh, you know, you can, I, I at, at times I had done like meetups where we created a meetup group where we just went and met up with other people in person and drew comics and everything. Or maybe you already know comic book creators in your area, you can do that. But if you don't, that's cool too because you can do this online. You know, there are tons uh, of Facebook groups and YouTube communities. The one that I'm involved with is the 100 Days of Main Comics, uh, started by Kevin Cross who created this guy, Monkey Mod. Um, yeah, but it, it started off as this, this challenge where for 30 minutes a day, every day for 100 days straight, you work on your comic book. And it's really effective because there was, this, this community started to grow and there were so many people involved that if you slack off a day, you know, the other, the other part of that is that you let people know about it on social media, you post on YouTube or Instagram or whatever. But if people aren't seeing you post, they're like, hey, what's going on? You know, you gotta get this, you get back, get back on track and get this comic done. So community is great. Plus it's, it's great for, you know, get, bouncing the ideas off of uh, each other. There's so many uh, incredible aspects of having, a, you know, a, a kind of this tight knit community. I don't want to say tight knit, like don't. I mean, like it's small. It can be small, but it can be a big community. And you know, in my opinion, the more the merrier. The more people involved. I mean, that's great. I mean, that's kind of what I'm trying to build here on YouTube with all the mad creators is community. So. Community is so important to creating comics, so definitely get involved if you, if you don't already have like uh, a set of friends or a community already that love to do comics and everything. Um, and you know, it's also great for collaborations. If say we're and again, we're going to get into all the different aspects of creating comics. But say you aren't the best writer, you know, writing's just not. You just want to draw, or vice versa. If you just if you're a writer and you you can't really draw and you don't really want to learn to draw, that's all right because with communities you can find collaborators. And everything and hopefully it's a mutually beneficial thing for everyone involved otherwise you know hopefully if you you're high if you if you're creating a comic and you need a writer you're hiring that writer or that artist or it's agreed upon that uh, everyone involved is getting the same thing out of it because you definitely don't want to get a situation where you feel obligated or you're just you're doing something that's not really your passion it's somebody else's because that drive to great comics is just gonna you know it's just gonna gotta wither and it's like uh, this isn't fun anymore so, so yeah, definitely get involved in communities, whether it's collaborations, whether it's just bouncing ideas back and forth, whether it's just holding you accountable. Community is so important. So the next thing to do as far as getting started is just to dive in. You know, the, the best way to learn how to make comics is by creating comics. If you're not, if, if you don't feel like you're at the right point yet, if you don't feel like your skills are at the level they need to be, it doesn't matter. Get started anyway. You know, maybe your first comic's not going to be the best comic, but it's going to be a comic. It's going to be something you can hold in your hand. Then you move on to the next comic and the next comic. And the more comics you create, the better you get at creating comics. But if you're constantly just staring at the page like, oh, I don't know if I, yeah, I'm just not good enough yet. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if it's stick figures. I've seen, I've seen some really awesome comics that are just stick figures or, you know, there's so many other creative ways. I mean, I would encourage you if you want to create comics, if you want to be an artist, to draw, but you know, start at whatever skill level you're at right now, but just get started. You will improve, you will get better. Once again, the best way to learn how to make comics is by making comics. And so that's gonna do it for today's episode, but before we go, I wanna just kinda talk about what we're gonna what we're gonna discuss on the next episode of Making Comics 101. Issue two is gonna be all about ideas, coming up with ideas for your stories. And there's so many different ways, and if you are one of these people that suffer from creative block or whatever, we're gonna help you out with that on the next issue of Making Comics 101. I will see you guys then, that is all. Hey, thanks for watching. If you like what you saw and you want to see more, hit that subscribe button. Also, you can follow me at CircWorks on social media. And now you can support the work that I do on Patreon. Do you like making comics? Then go to CircWorks.com and pick up the Comic Maker Starter Kit. It's packed full of fonts, brushes, templates, and more. And best of all, it's totally free.